While the U.S. says a Russian invasion appears imminent, leaders from around the world are still in search of a diplomatic solution. Joining us now live from Brussels in Belgium via Skype is Congressman Brendan Boyle, who represents Pennsylvania's 2nd District. Congressman, I know it's 10.30 p.m. there, so thank you so much for staying up and for being with us. How are you? Uh, doing well. I mean, it is... Um Surreal to be here uh, at NATO um, during this time in, in, in which we might be very soon about to witness the biggest land war in Europe since uh, the day of World War II in April 1945. Yeah. Um, however, I will say I was at today's sessions, uh, the sort of uh, unity among all of the 30 NATO nations is stronger than I've ever seen it before. So you are in Brussels uh, for a NATO meeting, as you just discussed. Can you tell us a little, bit, a little bit more about the meeting and also perhaps how some other nations view what Russian President Vladimir Putin is doing as far as this troop buildup and what looks like a forthcoming invasion of Ukraine? Yes, I'm here leading a um, U.S. bipartisan congressional delegation that is part of the NATO Parliamentary Assembly. Each of the 30 NATO countries send some of their parliamentarians here to where we meet, talk about issues, and, and vote on various resolutions. Um, this meeting uh, is unlike any other that I've been a part of because of uh, the prospect of war uh, being imminent. I would say that, you know, typically at sessions like this, you will hear disagreements around the, the very large NATO table. Some of our Baltic state partners don't tend in the same way our French and German allies do, for example. You didn't really hear any of that today, though. It, this was uh, the most uh, unity that I have ever seen um, now having attended these NATO summits for, for a few years. Uh, I think everyone recognizes the seriousness of this moment and that this is the ultimate test for NATO. Congressman, there have been a number of uh, pro-Ukrainian rallies in our country, some of which have included members of the local Ukrainian community in Montgomery County. They are demanding the U.S. do more to prevent a potential war. At this juncture, what can the U.S. do, and what's your message to Ukrainian Americans who have family back in Ukraine? Yeah, well, I, I happen to represent um, more Ukrainian Americans than any other congressional district in the country. Uh, we have a, a pretty large population in and around Philadelphia, especially Northeast Philadelphia and, and Montgomery County. So a number of those um, Ukrainian Americans who have been at these uh, protests are indeed friends and constituents of mine, and I stand with them. This is a time in which the West absolutely needs to stand by Ukraine. Uh, it is the right thing to do, but it is also in our interest. Because after Putin moved on Georgia in 2008, after Putin took over Crimea some years ago, now we see what is happening in the eastern part of Ukraine. Putin is not going to stop. So we need to make it incredibly expensive for Vladimir Putin to do this. And I mean personally going after his this wealth. Because if we don't, we're going to be in the situation again, only dealing with yet another European country at risk. Congressman Brendan Boyle of Pennsylvania's 2nd District, thank you so much for joining us all the way from Brussels in Belgium. Get home safely and have a good night, sir. All right, thank you.